Here's part two of, of uh, text analysis with R. We're following a lot of the suggestions that are made by Matthew Jockers in his textbook. In the previous video we talked about, uh, about R. R is actually down in this panel right here, the lower left hand panel. The upper left hand panel is essentially a text editor. So let's look at uh, this fourth line down here. Um, this is going to create an object called the text dot Agnes Gray. Agnes Gray is a is a novel written by one of the Bronte sisters. We're going to get it from Gutenberg. We're just going to ask R to go to Gutenberg and scan this entire text from from Gutenberg into this object. The way that it's going to do it is going to make everything a, a character data type. It's going to separate things with the, this sep is equal to backslash n is saying that it's going to separate them into lines. Be up here and copy that and come down and paste it into here. Now when I run that, it actually it, it found uh, 6,048 lines of text that are, let's look at some of it and see what it looks like. Text Agnes Gray, now that's the nice thing about R, is that it allows you to investigate stuff. Let's look at the first 10 lines. Oh, it's really not the text, it's all of that stuff that comes from from Gutenberg books. The, the metadata that's happening before. Now in this particular case, I've already done some homework and, uh, and checked through the data and found out where the text actually starts. I'm going to define something called start number and that's going to be 49. One nice thing about our studio is I can put my cursor just at the start of a line and come over here and say run that line. So I don't have to copy and paste, it just puts that line down there it's made start number uh, equal to, to 29 and move the cursor to this next thing. I can just keep pressing run uh, for each one of these lines and it uh, produces those results. I want to rebuild a, a new object that I'm going to call Agnes Gray that only has the text that's involved. So here's what the command is saying. This uh, this less than with a minus sign looks kind of like an arrow. That's the command in R that says to take whatever's over here and store it over here. So we're going to take the text Agnes Gray, the stuff that we scanned in a few minutes ago. We're going to go from that start number, actually 29, until we get to to line number 5750, which I know because of some other because I looked through uh, that object and found where the actual text begins and the actual text ends. Okay, so now we have this this new object. Let's come down here and just do a little investigation of it. Agnes uh, Gray. Now when I look at the first ten items there, the, that's actually where the story begins. Uh, <clears throat> Bronte begins by saying all true histories contain instruction though in some the treasures may be hard to find and so on. So we're seeing each one of those individual lines uh, from the text. We can look at the the length of Agnes Gray and there are now 5,722 lines of text that are about involved there. This particular file, this script file, is going to be available um, at the RUG web page and you can go there and, and read more about it. So I've... let's switch our attention now to, uh, to Moby Dick and do the same kind of thing with this famous novel. I go to the Gutenberg project again and, and scan in something that I'll call MD dot v. 
So I'm going to run that particular command. Notice that it takes a minute to do that because it, it has to go to the internet. It finds that there are 20,442 lines in this text. This is a much larger novel, a much longer novel. Uh, data scientists observe that it takes about 80% of research time just cleaning the data and getting it into a, to a shape that we can look at. And so that's uh, part of what we're doing here. And the MD is going to be the, the last line. I know that in Gutenberg project novels, then chapters are always written with capital C-H-P-T-E-R. So I'd like to know where all the chapters are. Let me run that for just a minute. Uh, let's come back down here and just look at that that last thing. MD chapter vector is going to show me the line that each one of the chapter names are in here. And you'll notice that there's a lot of them. Uh, there's there's uh, a hundred more. There's 150 chapters in in this thing, and and right now, in this vector, we know where all of those chapter markings are, are at. We're going to clean out all of those chapter lines. We want to get things so that we're just looking at all the words. The simplicity in this presentation. I'm going to clean all of those out. So notice the command that's here. I'm going to look at md.v. Remember what that was. That was what we scanned in. I'm going to just take the things from that, that that have the first chapter marking, and then go all the way to the end. So let's examine what we've got at that point. So we've now got this MD clean V. Let's look at the first ten things there, and that metadata that was at the beginning is now gone because we started at the first chapter marking and went all the way to the end of the text. Now the problem is that there's some metadata at the end of the text as well. I happen to know that the last word, let's go back up here to the text, uh, to the script, the last word in, in Moby Dick is orphan. So I'm going to use a command called grep who will search for orphan, there they are. Grip shows us that we've got one, two, three, four, five times that the word orphan is used, and there's the last time right there. I'm looking from 19770 to 19780, and sure enough, look at that last line right there. There's where orphan after her missing children only found another orphan. That's how the textbook ends. Then there's a lot of metadata that happens after this. If you look at just that one line, there's that one line. So we we want to, to clean out everything below there so we'll play the same game again. We'll look at md.lines.v. We're going to make that object and it's going to go from from line one of mdclean.v, which started the first chapter marking and then goes to the uh, to the last marking, and we can just run that command. And so now we've got that MD lines. Let's look and see what it has as the first thing that it starts out with chapter one, and MD lines. Dot v. Let's look at what it has at, at the end. The length of MD lines dot v. The, so that length command just says how many lines are there. So I'm looking at that very last line in this thing. There's the very last line of the text. So now we've got from chapter 1 to the very last line involved in the text. We're going to find where all these chapter headings are. We want to find all the times that the chapter followed by anything run that command. And what that has given us is now a list.
chapter headings gives us a, a list of those 150 lines where the chapter headings are. So we're going to build Moby Dick dot lines dot no chapter, and this is going to be a vector. So this is going to take the Moby Dick lines vector and subtract each one of the lines that were in that chapter heading. Look at MD dot lines dot no chapter V, and let's look at the the first ten lines of that. You know, notice that that now the chapter one is no longer there. Decided to to keep the chapter names in this process as we're going along. Okay, now let's move kind of quickly through uh, a few other things. We're going to, uh, this command is going to take all of those lines and collapse them into just one huge, huge, huge character. It's going to sa separate each one of the lines. This collapse is equal to uh, one blank space. It's going to just separate all these lines by a, a blank space. So now I've got that object. It does all of that just that quickly. Let's uh, change everything in that to lowercase. Um, so now there's no capital letters in, in any of that. And what I'd like to do is instead of having this one great big huge character, I'd like to split it into words. And so the, I'm going to do a string split. Instead of taking that one great big string, I'm going to split it into individual words, and that's what that next command is doing. The last thing that we produced was a list called MD words. It's a, a list, and the nice thing in R is that you can look at the structure of something, the structure of MD words.l. It's a, a character string now there's there's a whole bunch of these 257,000 almost 258,000 notice the first two things here were blanks and remember the text starts out by the first sentence is call me Ishmael so, uh, a list is a little bit more complicated data stru structure than a vector so we're just going to unlist this and make it a vector and now we want to remove everything that's blank. We want to move, uh, remove all of those blanks. So we're going to, th this command which is going to look in md.words.v and find those places that it's not just a, a null character. And so now we've cleaned all of those out. What we've got now is not blank v is really a list of of where the the words are not blank okay a new object a new vector called uh, moby dick dot word dot v which has just the stuff that's not blanks and so we can do that very quickly just like that okay the point that we're trying to make here is that r is extremely powerful and kind of massaging this huge amount of this huge amount of data and kind of crunching it so that it'll finally be uh, more convenient for us to, to work with. Okay, now that last thing that we made was this object called mdword.v. Let's look at the first 10 objects there. Okay, so there's Lumens, the name of the, the first chapter. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, never mind. And notice that everything is lowercase. Some nice things that you can do with that. Let's build an md.freq frequency. This is now going to be a table. There is a table command in R. And let's examine what that table did. So md frequency table has now gone through and listed every single one of the words that are used and the word occurred shows up nine times. The word it might be nice to sort that list so we're just going to to sort the list the command is you can just sort a table. We're going to sort it in uh, in decreasing order 
So there's the command, and let's run it. Now the nice thing about that object now is that if I look at sorted MD frequency table and looked at the first, say, 20 objects there, those are the first 20, the, the most used 20, uh, this is the 20th most used word and it's used 1,376 times. And instead of just a frequency table, let's do a, a relative frequency table. So now if, if we looked at sorted Moby Dick relative frequency table and looked at the first 20 items. Of course, it's the, the same uh, first 20, but now it's saying that the shows up 6% of the time. Notice the calculation that we did there. We just took the vector that we had before, uh, the table that we had before, we multiplied it by 100 and divided by the sum of all the words that were in the, the sum of the frequency of all the words that were in the table. Okay, command is enormously powerful in R. Let's run that plot command. So I'm going to plot the sorted MD uh, relative frequency table, the first 20 items. So there's the almost 7% of the times that uh, the, the appeared. R is very, very powerful. We could, could label each one of these words and show them in the table. We've done a very simple plot here that, that doesn't do all of those. To look at the word whale and look at the word Ahab. Okay, remember in the story there's there's the whale and there's this guy Ahab that or <laughs> there's a significant interaction between those two. Now this next collection of code takes goes in and identifies all the places that well appears. Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to build a vector called the novel time vector, which is just going to be a, a sequence one, two, three, four, five, up until the, the length of the words. So that's going to, to tell us the time in the novel, the novel time uh, that a word occurs. Then we want to build a, a vector whales.v which is going to say where in novel time that uh, uh, the word whales occurs. So, okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to, to build this w.count.v. Notice that it takes a couple lines to do that. The first thing that we do is just fill it up with as long as the timeline is, we're going to just put a, an NA in there. And then we're going to go back and everywhere that wh the word whales occurs, see we know the vector that tells us where whales occurs, then we're going to put a one. Let's just do it. I'm going to run that command, run that command, run that command, run that command, and uh, run that command. Okay. Okay, so we create this uh, vector called w.count.v that just has a bunch of NAs in it. We had already created this vector whales.v that tells us where in time the word whales occurs. And now in each one of that, in each place in that w.count.v, we change the NA if, uh, if whales occurs at that location and put a 1 there. So this new vector that we've got, the w.count.v, is a, is a long vector with a bunch of NAs in it. Most of them are going to be NAs, but occasionally there's going to be a one wherever whales uh, occurs. So now we've, we've rebuilt this vector w.count.v to have that characteristic that most of it's NA if, if the thing is not whales, and it's going to be a one if in that particular location the word whales occurs. Now we can, can plot what's called a dispersion graph of whales. Let me show you how that, how that graph looks like. Uh, 
the plot command is kind of a powerful one. So here we're looking at, at novel time. It goes from zero to word over, the, the last word over here is, is uh, gosh, that's a lot of words, 200,000, more than 200,000. There's a bar each time that the word whales occurs in this novel time line. So here at the beginning, there's not many references to whales, and then all of a sudden there's a lot of references in some places you can see where things are darker. All right, now we're going to play that, that same kind of game for the word Ahab. We'll build all of those same things uh, just a step at a time. And now we'll look at a plot of, of the word Ahab. It's not mentioned quite as often, especially towards the end here. It's listed quite often. It's, it's uh, not lifted, mentioned much at the very first and so on. Now, it's going to be nice to plot these two things together. Uh, R is enormously powerful with graphics, so we're going to give a command. This command right here is going to tell it to, uh, to plot two plots. So now we'll plot the, the whale data and plot the, uh, the Ahab data next to each other. Notice we're starting to see a possible pattern here. Notice that when whale is used in the in the novel at those times, there's not much reference to uh, Ahab. When Ahab is is mentioned a little bit stronger, there's not much reference to whale. Okay, so we're interested in investigating this apparent uh, negative correlation between the use of the word whale and the use of the word Ahab. Uh, we're going to work our way through things in the following way. We'll, we'll take the timeline and divide it up into 150 equal pieces, essentially. So we're going to find the, the length of the string. We're going to... to uh, start making some divisions there. There's a little bit of a remainder that we have to keep track of, so we'll add that to the last division. Uh, we'll d build the division markers. We're going to to build a sequence from 1 to 150. We'll uh, uh, create... Uh, you can just kind of read through that and see what's happening. Um, so let's look at, at what our divisions look like. It starts out at, at pos uh, the, the first item in this vector is zero, and the first division ends at uh, 1428. And so the next division will begin at uh, 1429 and so on. And there's the last uh, division, and you'll notice that 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 is in fact the same number as the length of all of the words. So that's kind of reassuring that we've got that created properly. Now we're going to go through and and count the times that the word Ahab occurs in each one of those individual uh, divisions. So we're going to first of all build an, an empty vector called ahab.counts, and then we're going to build that vector up with the do loop uh, for i goes from 1 to 150. We're going to go through each one of those sections of the vector and count the number of, of times that ahab occurs. Um, that's kind of a, an interesting line of code there. Uh, it might take a minute or two to look at it in more detail. We'll do the same thing with the with the whale count. We'll build an empty whale count vector. We'll do this do loop to to count the things that are there. Um, now we want to build a a graph, so we'll change our our uh, plotting scheme to just say that we're going to plot one plot at a time. And there's the plot of that data. Um, we'll build a linear model. 
with uh, Ahab counts predicting well counts and we can plot a regression line associated with that it seems to be a negative regression but you'll notice that there's quite a bit of scatter here so we suspect that the correlation isn't real strong from our analysis uh, we do a, a correlation have it calculate the Pearson's correlation coefficient and it sure enough is a negative but it's not a real large uh, correlation <laughs> Okay, so what we've tried to illustrate here is that there's lots of things that you can do with R to massage the data and, and this huge amount of data be able to quickly do some kind of experimental things and, uh, and discover details about the data.